Good morning, it's March 25th, and this is To My Liberal Friends. You know, I'm starting to think that the conservative wing of the Republican Party in the House of Representatives wants to be in the minority instead of the majority. And I'm speaking specifically of the House Freedom Caucus, which should be called the House Freedom from Governing Caucus. When the Republicans took the majority in the last election, the hope was they would be able to chair the committees, set the House floor agenda, and start reining in some of Biden's most egregious agenda items. But right out of the box, the Freedom Caucus showed that they were more interested in flexing their tiny muscles than anything else. They demanded the rule on filing a motion to vacate the Speaker's chair be changed so that only one member could file such a motion. Motion. Kevin McCarthy demanded a campaign tirelessly around the nation to get the Republicans elected and get a majority, finally had to give in to this small band of rabble-rousers in order to be the elected Speaker. It was only a matter of time before one of them would poke their head up and file such a motion. McCarthy had met with President Biden after Biden said he would not negotiate on the debt limit and forced him to compromise on multiple issues, and just about every political pundit said McCarthy had got the best of the deal. It limited increases in government spending, and now all the House had to do was follow that blueprint and begin to cut back the federal government. But then enter Matt Gates, the congressman from Florida. He was under investigation by the Department of Justice and the House Ethics Committee for engaging in a sexual relationship with an underage girl. In the end, Justice had to drop their investigation because the girl would not testify for fear her name would be splashed all over the newspapers and other media outlets. But the House Ethics Committee, a bipartisan committee with equal members on both sides of the aisle, continued their investigation. Gates demanded that McCarthy end the investigation, something McCarthy was powerless to do. As what seems to have become the norm, the House could not pass the appropriations bills to keep the government functioning. And let's be honest, the government does some things that are necessary to each and every one of us. So McCarthy negotiated a continuing resolution to keep the government running, and he had to use Democrats' votes to pass it as the Freedom Caucus all voted no. This allowed Gates to jump to the microphones and say that McCarthy had failed as the Speaker because the bill was only passed because enough Democrats voted yes to thwart the Freedom Caucus no votes. He filed the motion to vacate the chair. We all know what happened then. Once again, the entire Democratic caucus voted to oust McCarthy. They sat back laughing at the Republicans, and Gates and seven other Republicans joined all the Democrats, and McCarthy was gone. Exactly what Gates had accused McCarthy of doing, he used Democratic votes. The House then went through a couple of weeks without a speaker, as one candidate after another was shot down because he could not convince every Republican member that they would do what each one wanted. Eventually, they settled on Mike Johnson, a 52-year-old congressman from Shreveport, Louisiana, who had been first elected in 2017. Not a lot of experience. This past week, the House ran up against yet another deadline, caused, I might add, because the members of the Freedom Caucus refused to vote for the appropriations bills, and Speaker Johnson was once again forced to move a large bill funding the government for the rest of the year with some help from Democratic members who did not want to see the government shut down. You can guess what was coming. Marjorie Taylor Greene, the right-wing member from the Georgia 14th District, is now threatening to file a motion to vacate the chair. Since she and the rest of her Freedom from Governing Caucus think that one member should be able to file such a motion, it's only logical that one voter in their district should be able to force a new election. Wouldn't that be fair play? Wouldn't that be consistent with what they're saying in the House? One voter in their district should be able to force them to run again. Well, Mrs. Greene has not filed the motion yet, but says she is considering it. With Republicans holding only a one-vote majority due to the spate of retirements, it's another subject I'm going to address later in the week, any motion to vacate the chair will throw the House back into chaos. But that does not matter to these right-wing nutjobs. They want what they want, and they love the media attention when they threaten to upend any compromise. Green's motion came in response to Johnson's endorsement of a $1.2 trillion package to fund large parts of the government through the end of the fiscal year, which runs through September. What it was was six of those appropriations bills, which had gone through committee, had hearings, had markups, cobbled together and passed them with one vote. It was negotiated with Democrats in the White House and the Congress, an acknowledgement of the divided powers that currently define Washington. But the deal infuriated Green, who had pressed Johnson to go to the mats for steeper cuts to federal programs and conservative policy writers, even if it meant shutting down the government. I don't want you to think that the majority of House Republicans agree with this threat. Nothing could be further from the truth. The American people agree with us on the issues, meaning Republicans. What they don't agree with is this idiocy and chaos that is totally unnecessary and does nothing to actually solve the problems. 
And that's according to Representative Mike Lawler, who's running for re-election in a district that Biden won by 10 points in 2020. He doesn't need any of this nonsense. Now some Republicans are aiming their art in the direction of Green, slamming her rabble-rousing maneuver that has the potential to thrust the conference into more tumult. Quoting another moderate lawmaker that was anonymous, quoting said, some members need to come to the realization, like most children must, life isn't fair. They don't always get what they want, and we don't have enough votes even in one house of the government, end quote. As bad as the progressive caucus is on the Democratic side, they don't make their leadership look like fools. The problem is that we have districts where these right-wing idiots, along with the left-wing idiots, that are solidly red or blue so these members can act as foolishly as they want. What needs to happen is reasonable Republicans in the Georgia 14th District should find someone to replace Green. There's a similar effort to oust Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez in Queens. If all of these idiots, the ones that say we don't compromise or speak the other side, were finally sent home, then perhaps sane people could start working on solutions to our problems instead of grandstanding for attention. This has been To My Liberal Friends. Thanks for listening.